Hello everyone, Ravlad here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be going over the rules for my tabletop simulator card game, Battle Cards. Now, I've been working on this game for a while now, and I'm finally ready to go over the rules for it. Now, uh, before I start this video, I do want to apologize just for the audio, because unfortunately, I do have to use a keyboard and mouse, and I don't really have a good way of preventing those things from coming up on the mic, because this thing picks up everything, and yes, it is annoying. But I'll try my best, I'll try to talk loud so you won't have to constantly hear the sounds of the keyboard and the mouse. And um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So if you don't know what Tabletop Simulator is, Tabletop Simulator is a game on Steam that um, allows you to basically play any board game or card game that you could think of, but online with your friends. The workshop for this game is really diverse and big because it allows you import any game that you could think of into it in addition to being able to create your own games which is what I did with battle cards battle cards is an idea I've actually had in my head for a very long time and I'm glad that I'm finally able to bring it alive so essentially battle cards is a card game where characters from all different series like TV shows games and movies fight each other it's a pretty dumb idea but I think it's gonna be pretty fun to use so first off how to play so this is your battlefield and the first thing you're going to want to do is randomly deal uh six character cards which are the red ones to both character to both players so you're going to give yourself six character cards and these are the character cards you're going to use for the rest of the game you're going to leave the rest of the battle cards the character cards over here just don't like move them or anything just kind of keep them off to the side because you're not going to be pulling from any you're not going to be getting any more character cards for the rest of the game unless a specific item card tells you to. Which next thing you're gonna do, speaking of item cards, is you're gonna combine the item and field cards. Field cards are the yellow ones and item cards are the blue ones. You're gonna combine them. Obviously, you're gonna wanna shuffle a couple times. And then you're gonna deal out three of them to start. So, one, two, three. And you're gonna put the rest of the item and field cards over in the pickup pile. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose the first two character cards you wanna use. Now, a helpful thing to check out exactly what the cards do is to press the Alt key because it'll zoom in and show you exactly what you want. So, for our first turn, we're just gonna simply place down, let's say, you know, Bowser, why not? You know, he's a decent card. And of course, gotta do Captain Falcon. And the other player will do the same process. So we're just gonna pretend we're the other player and put their cards down. Now, obviously, when they're going to be playing, their cards are going to be upside down, but thankfully the Alt key also works for this, so it's still very easy to see what each thing is doing. First thing we should probably go over is the character cards themselves, since they are the main card and kind of the catalyst for everything. Each character card has an attack stat, a speed stat, and a health stat. As you can see, the sword represents attack, the boot represents speed, and the heart represents health. In addition to these three basic stats, the character will also have a passive ability that always applies to them. This ability you want to read because this will just apply to anything. So for example, if Falcon's speed is tied with anyone else's, he will always go first, meaning that there's no need for a coin flip, which I'll go over later. And he also has a special attack that can only be used one time each. Now every character has a special attack and it can only be used a single time. You can't use it again, even if it, you revive the character after it dies. And yeah, those are pretty much all that has to do with the character cards. But there's also one little thing at the bottom, which is the series and the alignment. There's three alignments being neutral, villain, and hero. These things don't really matter in the long scheme of things. You can use a villain card to attack a villain card. It doesn't really matter. The alignments are really only for certain item and field cards that specifically state what they apply to. But there's also a couple of abilities that also do the same thing, such as Man Man's ability being a plus three damage boost against any Man Man villain cards. And the other thing is the series to the left, which is just there to let you know what the character's from. There's not really much to that. It doesn't actually really have much of a purpose, although there are a couple field cards that specifically target a certain card, like the Mushroom Kingdom card is only for Mario characters. But aside from cards like that, the series is just there to let you know like what game this is from. Next up is field cards. Now, field cards are pretty simple. If you use a field card, you simply place it on top of one of your the character card you're going to use it on. Now, Keep in mind that there are some item cards, which I'm actually going to pull out a couple more just to see what we get. Now, there are a couple of item cards that are just kind of passive that will just activate automatically, such as 
this All Spark card, which reanimates any card from the graveyard, which again, I'll go over later. And this card you don't need to put on a specific character, you just kind of use it and then that's your turn. But character card, but most item cards kind of deal with just putting it on a specific character. Now some have a passive ability, which is adding a status effect or something onto the card, but for the sake of this one, it just fully restores the health of the card that we have selected, being Captain Falcon. We're also gonna go over what a field card does. A field card is pretty simple. Um, before your turn, you're gonna wanna place, you can place a field card before your turn if you have one and it doesn't use it up, which is nice. And these, you can just place down and you know, it activates whatever the thing is. So for example, this one makes the battlefield become dark and all attacks, not including specials, have a 25% chance of missing. And this applies to everything you do. Like this applies to everybody, not just the cards on this side of the table, but the cards on this side of the table as well. So the opponent can also place down their own field card. So you can have two field cards in running. However, each player only has one field card they can use in action. And if you want to use another field card, you have to get rid of a pre-existing one and then put it in the discard pile, which is also the same pile you put item cards you've already used. So we're going to put these two in the discard pile because we technically already used them. But now we're going to get over to what the meat of the game is, which is, well, how turns work. When it comes to turns, they're pretty simple. Basically, each player looks at what their speed of their character is, and that determines the turn order. For example, Captain Falcon will go first because he has 5 speed, and then Dracula, and then so on and so on. Now, Adam and Bowser have the exact same speed stat. Players are going to use a coin. There's, there's two coins here, but you really only need one. I just kind of put two because why not? Coins are here to decide who gets to go first if in the case of a tie like this. Now, let's say I'm Bowser and I choose heads as the thing I want to do. So we flip the coin and it's okay, cool, it's heads. That means I get to attack first, then Adam gets to attack. Now, even though I won the first coin flip against Adam and I got to attack first, that turn doesn't mean it holds true for the next turn. Every subsequent turn, which is a full turn, is after all four cards have gone, then you do the coin flip for Adam and Bowser again. So it's not just like, oh, I just win the coin flip so I get to fully always attack with this character. That's not how that works. And anyway, so yes, after a full turn is done, you know, you use this is what the t this counter is for. It uh, helps you determine what like turn it is. It's just there for convenience. You don't have to use it, but it does make it a little bit easier to keep track of things, you know, so you don't get lost. There are four actions you can perform with a certain character card. Now, each character card kind of gives you another uh, move to do in battle. So you have like two moves per thing. And there's four things you can do with that move. The first of which being the attack action. It's pretty standard what that means. Basically, you just attack with your character card. So, Captain Falcon goes first, and he'll attack, you know, say, Dracula or Adam. We're going to attack Adam for the sake of it. And basically, all you do is you just do 7 damage to Adam, and he only has 11 health left. But the, a good way to keep track of how much damage a character card has taken, since it can be easy to forget, is to use these damage tokens over here, which are the ones with the numbers on them. All you want to do is simply drag a five over here and then two ones because he did take uh, seven damage. And this indicates that, oh hey, he has taken seven damage. And you can see even with the one stack in each head, you can, it still tells you there's two there. So it's so just a kind of nice way. Now we're going to go over to Dracula since he has the next turn. Now the next turn we're going to demonstrate is a special. You can perform a special. This is still kind of in the attack option field, but the special is he takes control of an enemy's card for one turn. So for example, since we decided in the coin flip that Bowser goes next, I get, Dracula gets to control Bowser, and that means their turn doesn't count, since their turn is spent being controlled by a different character. Now it's just a cool like little special attack thing, obviously not all specials are like that, but yes, with Bowser we're actually going to demonstrate another thing you can do, which is you can attack your own cards. Now obviously there's not really much of a point in doing it if, say like, why would, if like, you have both cards in your control, it's not really a point in attacking your other card. You can if you want, it's just kind of there. It's like in Pokemon, where if you're going to double out, you can do it. No point. But obviously, since I'm taking control of Bowser with Dracula, we're just going to do that, and bam, 8 damage. So, again, you just grab a token, grab a 1. You can drag, you can drag them separately. I just like cloning them, because it's a little bit faster. But yeah, pretty simple stuff. Now, you might notice that we're going to kind of break out of, you know, turn order just to kind of show off. Another thing is that Bowser's special is Fireball. Now, the one enemy card gets burn effect for two turns. Now, there are multiple effects in the game that are all listed 
over here, they kind of show you what the tokens are for, because the tokens are over here, and these show you all the status effects. Now, the status effects are actually placed in the rules. Now, I know this is the rule video, but there is this rule thing over here that we're going to use real quick. Now, there are eight status effects in the game, three positive ones, and then five negative. Poison, every turn a character will take five damage. Paralysis is speed and cut in half. Dizzy is 50-50 chance of an attack missing. Burned is attack is cut in half. Now we're just gonna, now there's other stats effects, we can obviously read them in the rules. This is just kind of more of a, this, this video serves as a visualizer for a lot of that. But the rules should explain it well, it's just in case you still have questions, that's what this video is kind of for. Anyways, going back to Bowser's burn effect, since he does two burn to Dracula, what you're gonna simply do is just grab two burn tokens over here and place them on Dracula like you would damage tokens. Like it's the, What it means by for two turns is two attacking turns of that character. So when it's Dracula's turn again, that's when the burn goes into effect. And then when it's the next turn and it's uh, Dracula's move again, you know, you get rid of the other burn token. It The effects, for, it goes for any token, by the way. Like any of these effects, like um, any of them any of them, like any of the boosts, attacks, or anything, they only go into effect when it's the attacking turn of that character. Now, even if they don't do an attack that turn, it doesn't really matter, it's just when it's their turn to move, you know? Like, it's not, I just call it attack turn, since so the easiest way to say it, but that's, that's when it affects. Now, now that we've gone over attacks, and you know what character cards can do during a turn, we have using a card. This is the same thing. I already went over how item cards use. Basically, your turn is just spent using an item card. So say it's Captain Falcon's turn. I'm going to use, you know, the Enchiridion on him. However, you can also use your item turn to put it on a different character. Say I'm Captain Falcon. I put it on Bowser so that I can attack with Bowser now with this. Since I would have to wait a full turn to use it with Falcon. So a little bit of strategy there. And that's basically all the use card thing is. So, for example, if given to a hero card, all their stats will increase by three for two turns. Again, same thing. The same thing with this one is just kind of like, you know, when it's their next attacking turn. So, like, even though I applied the card this turn, it doesn't mean at the end of the turn we take one off. Since Falcon didn't even get to attack yet, and, it, you know, he just used it. So, it's when... It's his next attacking turn is when that countdown goes. So say it's, you know, it's one turn after I use the Enchiridion, and now it's Falcon's turn again, I use the attack, bam, that's one token off. And then, when it's the next turn, you take the other token off, and that's, that's how that works. And after the card has used up its effect, you put it in that pile. Now, for field cards, it's a little bit different. Item cards, when you use them, that's your turn. Field cards work a little bit differently. Basically, with field cards, you get to keep going after you use it. So, say like I want to use a field card for Bowser's turn. I use the field card and get rid of this one since I've already used that. I use the field card and I still get to attack as Bowser even after using the field card. Now that we've gone over all the basic actions, we also have one more thing to go over, which is swapping character. This is the last thing you can do during your turn if you want to, if you didn't do any of the other things. So say, you know, Falcon's looking pretty bad right now. What you can do is you spend Falcon's turn swapping out a character. So you're going to want to grab everything, including the damage tokens and any status effect tokens, because the status effects still carry on even after they're in the bench and that's what the bench is for is because you don't want to put this back in your deck because obviously the tokens won't be in you know your deck so you put it in your bench uh if you want to swap it back out but this is you know he's still alive he's still kicking he's not dead yet speaking of dead cards say if like okay adam just took a ton of damage you put him in the graveyard now the graveyard is they're dead you can't use them you can and you can't revive them unless you have a card that specifically says revives, like, revives a character. However, if a character gets a reviving card, the graveyard isn't specific to one player. So say, you know, it was the opponent's card, and I got the revive card, I could revive Adam for myself and then use him. But anyway, if you swap or a character dies, you obviously replace them. Now, you cannot attack with this replaced card because they died you swap them out. You spent that character's turn swapping them out. And that also goes for if a character kills a card that hasn't moved yet 
that turn is spent swapping it out. So when it becomes their, the person's turn again, it's automatically last because if your card's dead, that's a speed of zero. You spend that turn replacing the card. You don't actually get to attack with it after. Now with all the basic rules covered, that's pretty much it. Now I should mention that for field and item cards, you can only have four at a time. So say like I draw four, I can only have these four. I cannot pick up any more unless I discard one. So say if I want a another item card, I'll draw one, but then I have to discard one of them, which I'll just do Magmore Caverns. Now, as for how the game, now that I've explained pretty much everything there is to know, you just keep doing that kind of cycle, you know, using attacks strategically to kill off enemy cards without getting killed yourself, using your special attacks to take out the opponents with the best efficiency, and using your item cards in creative ways. Now this one I'm just going to use real quick, it's called the Annihil Arc. It just kills every item, field, and all the cards that are active at currently. So it just kills everything, so every card goes in the graveyard here. But basically, the game just simply ends whenever every single uh, character card of the opponent is in the graveyard. So after the Annihil Arc is used, you know, all the character cards are dead technically. Like, they're all dead, but since Falcon was still in my deck all this time, I win. Hopefully this helped though, and um... Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I have a link down in the description below to uh, the mod, obviously. It should be out by the time this video is also out. Uh, if you don't know how the workshop works, it's pretty simple. You just go into Tabletop Simulator itself on Steam. You just click the workshop uh, tab and you search up battle cards. And this should be one of the first results. I don't know if there are other results for battle cards. You'll figure it out. I'll have, again, a link down in the description though that will take you right to the battle cards link. And all you do, is you click subscribe to the mod and that will have it automatically installed into tabletop simulator if you have a download which i also have a link to tabletop simulator and it'll automatically be in your game and if you go into your games you know game selection it should be right here it should be the first thing up and you just click it you load battle cards uh this all this is doing is telling you to open the google document which is the rules so just let it do that and then it'll just open the rules so you can check them while in game and should load everything up correctly as you can see the board is clear again and yeah that's pretty much it so um i have a discord as well we'll go over all of the rules and the cards i add because i do plan on continually adding cards to this and so occasionally the mod will update. Don't worry, you don't need to reinstall it or anything. It will just automatically update when you open it up again. And the Discord also goes over like what cards are being added. It'll also explain like further rules. You can contact me there if you want help with battle cards. Like you just don't understand some stuff if I didn't explain it well enough in this video. You can go to my Discord channel for that. In addition, you can also suggest battle cards for me to make in the future if you want. So might be worth checking out, but I'll have links to everything below. But anyways, hope you guys have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.